welcome to, uh, of course, our weekly uh, South in preview. And, uh, of course, joining me, as always, is uh, Steve. And, Steve, uh, good week for you. Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Yeah, just hoping this wind dies down for our game tonight. <laughs> so, some great results uh, and some poor poor results, I suppose, for certain teams uh, <laughs> uh, yesterday and the day before. And, uh, you know, and Saturday sees another crucial round of games uh, in the Southern uh, League, and uh, as the season draws to a, a, a you know really exciting climax in almost all of the leagues. Yeah, yeah, and Premier Division Central, especially um, now that Banbury United have been confirmed as champions, um, going up behind them is a, a big race for the playoffs. But um, but Banbury, they've got um, they can have a they can have a say on. Uh, I, on who goes up and down, to be honest. I mean, they, on Saturday, they they play Barwell, um, who are not clear of relegation themselves. Um, Andy Wing's Bar, uh, Banbury side, they shared a draw with Tamworth, Tamworth at the Plantar Community Stadium on uh, last weekend in front of a fantastic crowd of 1,835, um, which was fantastic. Um, but Colville... Their goalless draw at home to Hensford Town meant the Purit Puritans couldn't be caught, so they claimed the title. And there was a, a lot of scenes of joy after the game at um, Banbury, I saw on Twitter and on, uh, on the videos. Um, but it's great for them because um, that's, to be honest, that's their first major major title. They've, they've, uh, they've been promoted, obviously, before, but that's their ma first major trophy. So um, well done to Banbury. Mm. They'll get their um, they'll get their uh, trophy and medals, by the way, on uh, Bank Holiday Monday, um, when uh, Chairman Terry Barrett and uh, President Keith Allen, who of course you uh, you interviewed for the uh, My Life in Football, um, and they'll they'll be doing the presentations on uh, Bank Holiday Monday at Banbury. Um, but. The good thing for Barwell, or could be the good thing for Barwell, is that very often teams that have already won titles tend to relax in games that they have remaining. And uh, certainly Barwell, they will hope that that's the case on Saturday. Uh, I've seen it, I don't know about yourself, but I've seen it many times before where, you know, teams have won things and, and they suddenly take their foot off the gas and, uh, and uh, they, they, they tend to... Uh, to lose the next few games because it's uh, there's there's nothing on it. But um, um, the race for the playoff positions now it, it, it's a case of four from five really, um, with Alf Church being the outsiders currently in sixth place. Um, and there's a big game at the Manda Crookshank Solicitors <laughs> Stadium, another lovely one, um, where Colby will become fifth place, a welcome fifth place AFC Richmond and Diamonds whilst uh, Ian Long's Alf Church side will be hoping for a favour from the Ravens as they travel to eighth place Hensford Town, needing maximum points, really, if they're to stay in the race. Colville dropped to third in the table on Tuesday night after losing 3-2 at home to Royston, um, the, the League Cup winners. Um, Peterborough Sports, who won on the same night to take over second spot, and Rushall Olympic are the two other teams in the playoff places, with Jimmy Dean's Turbines, facing a tricky test at the B Arena against the Biggleswade Town side fighting for survival. Rob O'Keefe's side haven't played since holding diamonds to a goalless home draw last midweek and are currently second from bottom and trail third from bottom and Eaton Borough by four points. But they possess a couple of games in hand on uh, Jimmy Ginelli's men. Indeed, Nuneaton are arguably involved in the game of the day in the division as they of a six-pointer with Hitchin Town at Liberty Way on Saturday. The Canaries pulled away from the drop zone last Saturday after a crucial 3-2 home win over bottom side Lowestoft Town, but are only three points in front of Borough, so certainly can't relax. The Trawler boys, they really need maximum points from their game against mid-table Tamworth at Crown Meadow, as they're nine points adrift of the safety mark with only 15 left to play for. Steve, where would you expect... Uh, the Trawler boys to end up if, if if the worst was to happen. What you know? What what division would you think they would stay in the Southern League or would they go back to the Isthmian? I mean, where where do you think they might the dice might fall for them? Well, it, it's rumor has it there's going to be another reshuffle of um, of clubs in in the summer. Um, Lowestoft 
and Leiston, another one, or Leeston, whichever you want to call it. Um, they're both they're both teams right on that periphery, aren't they? Of the of the are they going to be in this one or that one? And it, and there are always these um, teams on the periphery of the uh, uh, of where the the, the cut comes. Um, I don't know. I think um, I think a lot of you know, a lot of clubs will hope that um, they're not in their division because <laughs> it's a it's a it's a trek whether they're in the Eastman League or in the Southern League. Um, um, but um, I, I I have an inkling they may may well be in the Eastman. Mm. Um, I may be wrong, um, but um, I don't know. They, they, Another team um, needing the points on Saturday are Bromsgrove Sporting, and they welcome Needham Market to the Victoria Ground. The Market men, having lost at home to Nuneaton Borough last weekend, and have only won once since losing their, their FA Trophy quarter final. St Ives Town and Redditch United probably feel relatively secure, um, but I'm sure their relative camps would be. Uh, happier if they manage to get something from their games against Stourbridge and Leiston or Leiston. <laughs> and the day's other game sees League Cup winners Royston entertain fellow mid-table side Stratford Town at Garden Walk. Now, I'm going to put the boot on the other foot now then. Um, where would your money go for, uh, for relegation? Oh, I don't really know. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really difficult one, isn't it? It's... Yeah. I'm just going to pull the table up in front of me. I mean, you'd probably say that uh, Lowestoft, are, are, you know, are, are going to have to say goodbye, but uh, it's going to be a difficult one. It's, it, there's always one <clears> team, <throat> isn't there, that sort of drops into that zone uh, that you don't expect. And you're really looking at it, Biggles Wade 32, but two games in hand. Uh, you know, Nun eight and 36, Bromsgrove 38, Barwell 38, Hitchin 39. And, you know, and Hitchin, you know, so Barwell probably played the most. But you always look at that Nunny and Borough situation where they've had a minus one point. Could that minus one point be the minus one point that uh, that, that kills them in the end? Um, I mean, on paper, you'd probably look at it and go, the one that would probably be a little bit at risk maybe Barwell because they've played more games than everybody else. Um, I don't know. I Normally, when you see teams get points taken off of them, it's normally them that end up getting that really bogey place. So probably yeah. none eaten borough, but I'm probably going to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Your head on the block. The race <laughs> for the Premier Division South title could hardly be closer though as we head towards that crucial Easter period. Uh, and there's a game on Saturday's fixed list that immediately catches the eye and that take, takes place at Imber Court where two of the main contenders, Metropolitan Police, and Taunton Town do battle. Gavin McPherson's Met side dropped two home points last weekend when Harrow Borough held them to a 1-1 draw, also at Invercourt, um, whilst Rob Dre's Peacocks went to the top of the table at the time with a hard-earned 3-2 home win over Somerset rivals and playoff chasers Western Superman. But they lost leadership on Tuesday on goal difference when Hayes and Yedding United beat Salisbury 2-0 and then suffered a 1-0 defeat at Bolitho Park to Truro City on Wednesday night. Truro, who still have an outside chance of sneaking into the top five themselves, maintained that chance when Niall Thompson scored the only goal of an entertaining encounter in Plymouth just after the hour mark. The two other main protag protagonists, Hayes and Yedding and Farnborough, are both at home on Saturday. Spencer Day's Borough have a tricky one against Paul Town, who are 10th while Paul Hughes' Hayes outfit welcomed a Yate Town side and still trying to chase down Western for that time, final uh, top five spot. Farnborough also suffered a blow to their title hopes on Wednesday evening when they were beaten 2-0 at Tiverton Town, who played the final 38 minutes or so with 10 men after veteran defender Craig Woodman was sent off. Chesham United in six travelled to South Wales to play a Merthyr Town side who will be in buoyant mood after their 5 0 hammering of Salisbury last weekend. But a win for Dorchester Town at home to Hendon could relegate Merthyr. And a point for Kings Langley at home to Swindon Superwing could also put bottom side Wim, a, a, a Wimborne Town out of their misery, which happened actually, um, because they uh, 
they were beaten uh, 4-1 on Tuesday night um, at home by Harrow Borough. Hartley-Whitney, uh, they gained a vital 2-0 win at Tiverton last Saturday to move in nine points clear of third from bottom Kings Langley. But they will want to beat Wimborne at Newcastle to ensure they are safe. Beaconsfield Town against Tiverton at Holloway's Park and Harrow against Salisbury at Earlsmead are the two other games in the division for this weekend. Right, Nick on the block again. <laughs> Hayes and Yedding. Yeah. Uh, and only because, for me, Hayes and Yedding are probably, you know, looking at them, and I might be wrong, because I say I'm not p paid too much attention, in, you know, to, 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 the, um, to that sort of division, but I would have said... Uh, Hayes and Yedding, uh, mainly due to the fact that, uh, you know, when they used to be in, um, I think the Eastman as well, I think I've seen them in Eastman, they, they, they were very much a, a powerhouse team. They seem to have a lot, you know, a lot about them um, as well. Um, but then you look underneath, it's just incredible, isn't it? I mean, Talton, <coughs> these Farnborough, I mean, on, on all of those that are there, Farnborough again, another big side, Met Police are probably the smallest side there. And you think, well, hang on a minute, what are Met Police doing there? We discussed this on our Monday night show, you know, how well Met Police are doing. My head tells me Hayes and Yedding. My heart says, please let it be Met Police. Well, the interesting thing is that Taunton, Farnborough and um, Met Police all meet each other. Right. In the games remaining, in the four, in, amongst the four games remaining. So... Uh, Hayes and Yedding have that advantage in, 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 the, in the running. They, they've probably got an easier running. Um, but of course, as usual, Easter will be the crucial, uh, the crucial time. Um, but um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a really tight one. Um, and it could well end up going to the last game of the season. Uh, and interestingly, that I think Taunton play Farnborough on the last day of the season. So that could be, wow. a, that could be a crucial one. Yeah. And at the bottom... Um, I'm at the bottom of the table. I would, my heart still says Murphy might get out of it, but I, I don't know. But maybe the run might be coming a bit too late, but uh, yeah. it would be nice uh, for a certain memory of the board anyway. It would be <laughs> <really> nice. <laughs> right. The title race in Division One Central looks like going right to the wire. Although leaders Bedford, who Bedford Town, who hold a three point advantage over set place Berkhampstead, have a significantly better goal difference, probably worth another point. Um, the Eagles boosted their that goal difference last weekend with a 7 0 hammering of now relegated Wantage Town, moving a further six goals ahead of Berkhampstead, who won 1 0 at Waltham Abbey on the same day. Saturday sees Bedford face a tricky test at Hearn's Way against playoff chase in Welling Garden City, while the Comrades also have a tough task when they make the relatively short journey to Watson Park to play another top five side where. In arguably the game of the day in the division. And I think this weekend, Steve, will decide who wins the league. Yeah. And only three points in it, um, you know, and they've got a better goal difference, but they are two very, very tricky ties for, for Bedford and Burke Hampstead. Um, and I think this weekend, whoever comes out on the plus side, or shall we say, this weekend will probably end up taking the title, I think. Yeah. AFC Dunstable and Northley are the other contenders, and uh, they both have home matches this weekend. Creasy Park hosts uh, FC Romania, who are 11th, while the Millers welcome Hartford Town to Ancient Park. Ben Hurd's Hartford are still in a battle to avoid that third from bottom playoff spot, along with Kempston Rovers and Kidlington. All three are on their travels on Saturday, with Kempston at the Meadow, to play Aylesbury United and Kidlington travelling to the arena to take on your boys Harlow Town, who managed a 2-0 win at Bart Rovers last weekend, a result that lifted the Hawks to eighth in the table. Tame United would need to win all of the remaining four games to stand any chance of slipping into a top five spot, starting with Saturday's tricky trip to St Neat's Town. But they do have AFC Dunstable and where to play although they certainly could have done with all three points from their trip to Colney Heath last weekend, a result that saw Heath's one season in the league come to an end. Elsewhere on Saturday, Barton Rovers welcome Walton Abbey to Sharpen Ho Road, Biggles Wade FC take on Didcot Town at the Erie, and the two relegated teams, Wantage and Colney Heath, 
can console themselves when they meet each other at Alfredian Park. So there you go, top one then for you. Yeah, I think, uh, as I said, it would depend on this weekend. Um, I can't think, and I'm not sure if the, <coughs> I'm not sure if the situation between the match between Bedford and Kidlington has been sorted yet, whether they've got to replay the game, whether it was a win to Bedford or, or, or whatever else. That one could, of course, have major issues on what goes on uh, with the title as well. But if it hasn't been sorted, you'd probably look at it and say Bedford probably, you know, stand a good, great chance. But they're up against two very, very good sides at the weekend in Welling Garden City and Ware. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if we're sitting here this time next week and they've both lost. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, it, it's going to be tough. I mean, you, on paper, you've probably got to say uh, Bedford. Um, but I, I've had it for weeks. I've still had this feeling that Burke Hampstead might nick it. And I don't know why, but I've just had that feeling for the last couple of weeks. But uh, we'll, we will see when it comes to it. The Championship race in Division 1 South is heading towards being another nail-biting affair. On paper, at least, any one of the current top five could still win the title, which is amazing, really, coming to this stage of the season. Although Winchester City, who won at Larkwell Athletic last weekend, would need a catastrophic collapse from the teams above them, to be honest, and at the same time win all four of their remaining games to claim their top spot themselves. But they host Melksham Town on Saturday, hoping first and foremost to hold AFC Totten off pushing them out of the top five places. The Stags, they welcome Evesham United to the Snow Stadium, while the Robins still require a point or two to steer clear of that third bottom spot themselves. There are two, two other candidates for Game of the Day in division, with the four other top teams facing each other. Sirencester Town have informed Plymouth Parkway visiting the Carinium Stadium, while Froome Town, who went back to the top of the table last weekend after winning 2 at Will and Rovers, have a Bristol Manor Farm outfit travelling down on the back of a good 1-0 win against Scholing last time out. Scholing are on their travels again on Saturday as they face relegation threat in Cinderford Town at the Causeway ground. Barnstable Town's valiant attempt to avoid relegation could end on Saturday if they, have, they fail to beat Highworth Town at home and results elsewhere go against them. While second, play, second from bottom, Mangotsfield United still need to win at neighbouring Portland Rovers to go into Easter with any chance of staying up. Every game in the division this weekend has something riding on it. As the two other matches see Biddeford AFC and Limington Town both facing difficult away games in their battle to avoid finishing in what realistically looks like being that third from bottom spot. The Robins are at Lark Hall Athletic and Limington face the long trek across from the New Forest to Devon to play Will and Rovers. It's going to be an interesting finish. But as you said some time ago, the powerhouse that he's been a part way have, have come from, what was it? I think when we first started doing the show, seventh or eighth, I think. And then, yeah, all, yeah. Sitting, uh, you know, it just shows you how tight things are. They're, they're, they're actually sitting top. I know you're going to ask me, I can't look any further than Plymouth Parkway. Do you know what no. I mean? I think they, they, they will win it and probably end up winning it by three or four points, I think, by the end of it. And uh, it, it'd be very interesting then to see underneath who comes through. Uh, I've interviewed the people at Froome Town. So I suppose just on that, I'd like to see Plymouth Parkway and Froome Town come up from that division. It'd be a fantastic achievement by Plymouth Parkway, who a lot of people are, are uh, predicting um, could go right through the divisions quite quickly yeah. um, because they're, uh, they've got a real good um, setup down there. The infrastructure is good um, and they're really on a roll. If, if you look back, two or three seasons from where they were there to where they are now, it, it, it's fantastic. And uh, there's a lot of people predicting that, that they'll, be, uh, they'll be pushing the National League before very long. Let's hope so. Let's hope so for them, um, because that'll be good. But um, that comes to the end of our, our preview again this week. And hopefully everybody at home is enjoying uh, Steve's preview of the games coming up at the weekends. And of course, uh, we're also doing our My Life in Football. There is another one. Uh, coming up uh, on Tuesday and uh, we'll leave that a little bit of a surprise for the time being who that may be but of course if you've got anybody that you want to see in that uh, My Life in Football then please make sure you give us a call make sure you give us uh, an email or a tweet or whatever else if there's somebody in your club supporter 
uh, manager, director, or member of the board, or whoever that you'd like to see us have a chat with about their story, uh, then uh, please do. Don't forget to go to the um, Southern League YouTube site and actually make sure you subscribe because already on there is, of course, Tony Gal and, of course, Keith as well, which we did last Tuesday. So please make sure you have a look at those because they're two cracking little interviews there. But from me and from Steve, have a good weekend. Hopefully everybody gets the three points that they need uh, at the weekend. And me and Steve will be back for another preview uh, this time next week. From me and from Steve, good night. Right.